What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Locks DFS MLB breakdown video for this June 21st MLB slate, 15 game slate we got on tap. I'm Christian Hardy coming to you from LockDFS.com. As you can see on the left right here, we are a provider of DFS content. Uh, we have lock sheets and uh, first look going in, basically just helping you develop your lineups, become a better player, understand why we pick the plays we do, grading our players out and that sort of thing. Help you, like I said, I think it'll really help you guys build your own lineup. So be sure to check us out at LockDFS.com. And if you are not a member, be sure to comment and subscribe. Uh, you have a chance to win a free season pass if you like and comment on this video. So uh, we just go back at the end of the week, which is today, and, and look through the comments and see who's been commenting. Uh, we really appreciate that. helps us out a lot. And uh, so we'd like to give back to you guys. So be sure to do that. And with all that said, let's get into the slate. So I really think pitching today is pretty condensed, even though it is a 14 game slate. I think there are four very clear options, um, and I think we're going to see that in ownership. So at the top, we're going to have Chris Sale and Trevor Bauer, and we're going to talk about them individually here shortly. We're going to have Chris Sale versus the Blue Jays. We're going to have Bauer versus the Tigers. Um, we're going to have Nola versus the Marlins. Nola only 8K on, on DraftKings. Really, really good price. And then you're going to have Joe Musgrove at 5.5K against the Padres, um, who is a little bit more risky, obviously, but someone that if you want to save salary and get a lot more bats into your lineup, you can. Probably not the route I'll be taking today, but still someone who projects very, very well at that price. So let's go ahead and start at the top with Chris Sale. He is 12K. He's going up against a Blue Jays team who has a 2.9 team total. Actually, it's up to three. I apologize. Uh, Blue Jays striking out a 23.6% and a 86 w they have an 86 WRC plus versus lefties this year. Let's go look at sales numbers. Of course, they have been phenomenal this year. Um, there's not a whole lot to say about them, but let's go ahead and go into this swinging strike rate first. You got a 14% swinging strike rate, um, and he has. I mean, if you just look at the Woba numbers, 272 Woba to lefties, 268 to righties, xFIPs at 2.94 to lefties, 2.91 to righties. Um, the K per nine, 13.2 to righties, 11 to lefties. Um, hard hit, just just very very low. Uh, nothing really too concerning here on Chris Sale's profile, and and, and I mean I'm I'm more than willing to pay that 12K for him. Uh, in this matchup against the Blue Jays, who again they'll give you a good amount of strikeouts. Um, up and down the lineup, uh, save for like Eric Sogard. The rest of these guys are striking out a good amount. Uh, so I I'm definitely going to be looking at Chris Sale as my SP1. But I'm also going to be considering Trevor Bauer, who gets himself a great, great matchup today as well. He's not nearly as heavy of a favorite as uh, Chris Sale is. Chris Sale minus 322, Trevor Bauer minus 185. That said, um, still a very, very good spot here. And, and I think the Indians aren't as good of a favorite just because they're coming up against Matt Boyd. Who, uh, who has had a really, really good season. So uh, really the biggest thing <clears throat> for Bauer is just how bad this this Tigers lineup is. So let's go up, go ahead and pull up the StatCast lineup uh, for the Tigers here. And you can see it on the left. Uh, just look at these K rates that up and down. 31%, 22%, 22.5%, 20.9%, 27.1%, 29.9%, 28.9%, 29.9%, 30.9%, 33 uh, That is Bobby Wilson who only has two ABs. Um, so, but still it's going to be Bobby Wilson, a guy who doesn't have very many professional ABs. Um, and then you're going to have Gordon Beckham. So tons of strikeouts up and down this lineup. Obviously Bauer is a guy who, who really needs those strikeouts to be, to be a productive pitcher, especially this year where, as you can see, he struggled with some hard contact to lefties, giving up a good amount of home runs, eight home runs and 43 innings to lefties. So, um, <clears throat> but the other thing about Bauer is that, uh, he's only going to be facing three lefties in this lineup. Uh, you're going to have Harold Castro, you're going to have Nico Goodrum, you're going to have Kristen Stewart, um, all of which, while they do have a decent amount of power, um, especially Goodrum, they, they, they're all striking out at a good clip, and I think the Bauer has so much strikeout upside in this matchup that I'm, I, I really think that he is in heavy consideration to be my SP1 as well with Sale. Um, we'll see how lineups roll out and see if there's a chance to get a Sale-Bauer lineup in there. I, I don't think that that's going to be the case, but it's definitely possible. Uh, I built something last night that I kind of liked. Uh, you know, I could kind of adjust it around and uh, maybe possibly fit those two in. So we're just going to have to see how the lineups roll out. And lastly, let's talk about Aaron Nola and what is a really, really good matchup. He is getting a 3.1 run total um, uh, uh, versus the Miami Marlins, who have been one of the best uh, matchups in baseball all season. If we just go ahead and switch this over to versus righties this season and we go to the Marlins, they are probably going to be very close to the bottom, if not at the bottom. Uh, the Marlins, 
And uh, by the way, the Tigers here, 26% K rate, 74 WRC plus the righties. That is, um, that's really bad. And it's gonna, that's gonna be Trevor Bauer's matchup. Right above that, we've got Aaron Nola's matchup. 75 WRC plus with a 25% K rate for Aaron Nola. Uh, going up against the Marlins for Aaron Nola. And uh, if we just pull up Aaron Nola's profile here, uh, it, it's been pretty good this year. Uh, he's got a 3.78 xFIP to righties, 4.12 to lefties. Uh, he's a guy who who does get a decent amount of strikeouts. Uh, nothing too crazy in in his uh, in his contact there that we should be concerned about. Nine percent swinging strike rate, uh, which I believe is actually down this season from last year, uh, but still still a very good spot for him. And I mean I mean just 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 the price really that we're getting on Nola. Like we saw a guy like Adam Wainwright who has very little K upside. Uh, you know he was 7.5 K yesterday. He ended up getting hit at the end a little bit there. Um, but Nola is a better pitcher than than Wainwright and also has higher upside than Wainwright with his strikeouts. And only 8K for Nola is just a price that is is uh, extremely favorable. I think Nola will probably become the chalkiest pitcher on the slate uh, with with uh, uh, everyone going with a mixture of Bauer and Sale. It looks like people will be preferring Sale on this slate. Um, so if you are going Bauer, probably going to be a bit contrarian, but I do think Bauer will get plenty of ownership in cash. Um, just if you're going with Bauer and you're going with uh, you're going, if you're going with Bauer and Nola, you're really going to be fading Sale. It's going to be a tough spot to be in uh, with Sale being so, so dominant this year and just obviously throughout his career. So those are going to be the three main pitcher spots on the slate. Like I said, I think ownership will be very condensed. Going through the rest of the slate, there's just really not a lot of other spots that we're going to be looking at here. I mean, uh, I mean, it, you could scroll up and down. Like You've got, you've got Walker Bueller maybe as a GBP play. He could be in play, but I mean, uh, Ray's opener. Uh, Orioles, gonna, the, John Means is not pitching. He, they're going to go with an opener. Um, you got Taylor Clark versus Jeff Samarja. We're going to talk about that in a second. The, the, neither of these two guys have any upside. Like, there's just really not a lot of other spots. So, <clears throat> even if I'm playing in tournaments, I'm really just going to condense my ownership down to those three guys probably, and, uh, and, and maybe maybe a few you know like Bueller's um, and, and and stuff like that. Maybe a few Musgroves, but for the most part, it's going to be those three. So let's go ahead and move on to hitting spots. Uh, like I said, so we're, you know we're going to be paying up a pitcher here. Although uh, Nola at 8K does open some things up, we're still spending 20K on our pitcher. Uh, we just plug those two in real quick with Sale and uh, Nola. We're going to have 3.75 per bat, uh, which isn't a ton to spend. That said, I'm going to be talk so I'm going to kind of spread out and not going to go with with team stacks on, on in this video, and I'm instead going to kind of go with some individual spots and prices that I like a lot. The first one's going to be David Peralta right here at 4.4K. He's been really, really priced down. Uh, obviously, he's a guy who hits righties very, very well over the last year. A 4.4 well, but 2, 248 ISO. Uh, we pull up Jeff Samarja's profile here. Uh, and he has really struggled with lefties throughout his career. He's giving about 5.78 XFIP this year to lefties with a 37% hard contact rate, 47% fly ball rate. Of course, this is a park where once the roof is closed, it hasn't been announced it's closed yet, but it will be. It's 100 degrees. Um, it, it is a place that does kind of take away power a little bit. It's harder to get out of the park, but still Peralta at this price in this matchup just makes too much sense. Um, there's really no one else on this Diamondbacks team, I think, that is a price you really take advantage of on DraftKings. However, usually on FanDuel, Gerard Dyson is very cheap, and he still is, so he'll be a very good play. Adam Jones is is, uh, is fine on both sides. Samarja does give up a good amount of hard, uh, hard contact to righties as well. Uh, we're dealing with a 5.4 run total here, so I am fine with going with a few of these Diamondbacks bats uh, against Samarja. On the other side, uh, while I don't love any, and, and I'm going kind of out of order here because because just because we're going to stick on this game real quick, so I don't love any of these Giants bats. It's just that they've been really really cheap. Uh, and Taylor Clark, let's pull up his profile real quick. Uh, 6.42 x with the lefties is the most notable thing. 2.4 home run per nine, and the contact 37 percent hard contact, 42 percent fly ball. I'm actually not opposed to going with righties. I know we see this four x fit. But you're seeing this contact here, 35% hard contact to righties, 39% fly ball. Uh, I do prefer the lefties. Uh, so you, you're really just looking at, at these two lefties at the top that are pretty cheap uh, for what you're getting. Panic, a, a contact guy, uh, and he, he does have a, a little bit of, a, he does lean a, a slightly fly ball, you know, uh, recently. Brandon Belt at 4K isn't a bad price as well, although he does take up the first base. He no longer has multi-position eligibility on DraftKings. Uh, those two are both the two I'm going to be targeting. I do think if you want a really cheap shortstop, Crawford strikes out a ton, but he does have some one-off power, and he could get there against Taylor Clark, who gives up so much hard contact to lefties. Um, and you see that massive exit as well to lefties. So so those are two spots I'm going to be targeting. And then the last one that I want to talk about on this slate um, is going to be 
the Texas Rangers, they're coming in with the highest team total on the day, 6.3 6 runs. Uh, we're going to get a 52% humidity, 92 degrees in Texas. You see the wind blowing in pretty hard. That's going to affect some of the power. Uh, balls not, might not be able to fly out quite as well, but still a very, very good spot. You're going to see Chu and Andrews be more kind of GPP shaded plays. They're just still very expensive for what you're getting here. But the plays I really like are going to be right here in the 4, 5, and 6. You're going to get Nomar Mazar, 4.3K. Willie Calhoun at 4.5K. And as Drupal Cabrera, who hits righties very, very well at 4.1K. All three of those plays, I think, really make a lot of sense in terms of point per dollar. Let's pull up Ronaldo Lopez's profile real quick, and let's walk through that. 4.94 XFIP to righties with a 6.57 XFIP to lefties. Uh... These fly ball rates is really what's most notable playing in this ballpark. Of course, like I said, the wind is blowing in, so it's you know there's a chance always that these these that his hard contact these fly balls could get caught up in the wind. Um, you know that's definitely possible. Hopefully, we see the wind die a little bit because 16 miles per hour blowing in is definitely significant. Uh, that said, I'm still gonna be targeting these guys uh, with these with these contact numbers. 42 42 percent hard contact for Lopez to righties, 35 percent to lefties. Uh, you see the fly ball rates almost 50 percent to both hands. So. Uh, and, and I mean, Lopez has been the same last year. Uh, gives up a lot of home runs with all that hard contact, all those fly balls. So Rangers definitely going to be a spot that I am going to be targeting. I do think that Delino De Shields is fine. He's just not a guy who has a lot of power. He's not on the better side of his splits. Uh, so I do think the price is okay, uh, but but definitely not loving it. Uh, and then you have all these White Sox priced up against Ariel Girado, who has actually been pretty solid for, for the most part. Charlie Tilson, we get lead off, but Girado has been shut down on lefties this year. I do think the price still is going to be pretty solid, uh, even though Girado has been good on lefties. And then some other pay-up spots, just in case you are looking to pay up for bats. I do like these expensive Red Sox. So we've got Betts, uh, Bogart, and JD. Obviously, my two preferred are going to be Betts and JD. Uh, they are 5K, so you're pretty much going to be, if you're playing... Uh, I do think you can definitely make it work. And then the last spot, and it's actually going to be my home run call, it's going to be Mike Trout. Mike Trout at 5.8K versus Michael Walker, a guy who pitches to contact, doesn't have a lot of strikeout stuff. Uh, you, see the, you see the humidity, the temperature in St. Louis today. Really like the spot there. Trout's, Trout's 5.8K again. He has been red hot. I mean, he usually is red hot. He's Mike Trout. He's very, very good. Uh, I also like stacking this up with Justin Upton. I think Albert Pujols is the cheap first base play. Um, hits right, he's fine. So uh, Tommy Lastella, even he, his price continues to come down. So, you know, you see the 4-9 run total, not anything crazy, but Michael Walker is a guy who pitches a contact, doesn't get strikeouts, and I think these Angels will do really well in that, and I, I, I think they'll have a good day. Also, not to mention, you know, uh, if you want to spend money, if you want to save money and you are going with a guy like Mike Trout, um, pitchers I am most likely going to be spending down, which is why I mentioned a guy like Joe Panic. Uh, so Rangifo is definitely going to be in play for me, especially if I end up getting to a guy like Trout, if I end up getting to a guy like Upton, which is definitely possible. Um, getting, getting two angels in that lineup would not be a bad idea. So Mike Trout is going to be my high price term run call of the day. And I have not actually looked at under 4k home run calls. So, uh, let me scroll through real quick and give, give me one second to find you a cheap home run call. Cause I'm going through my teams that I like right now and I'm not seeing anything off the top. Um, I don't mind Jackie Bradley, but 3.8K seems like a hefty price to pay for him. And there's no one under 4K that I think is a good home run call in that Rangers game. This is actually a really tough spot. Um, I guess I'll just go with Brandon Bell at 4K. He's a, he's right on the he's right on the fringe there. Of being, oh, you know who I'll take is my, no, 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 no. This is actually who it is. Jonathan VR at 3.8K. Mike Leak, a guy, again, who pitches to a lot of contact. I'm surprised his price is this expensive, but he is a, a, a decently heavy favorite against the Orioles today. But uh, VR is a guy who's just way too cheap. He's got he's probably going to end up in, in one of my either second base or shortstop today. 3.8K for a guy who, you know, uh, he does he does struggle better from. Uh, he, he, he does struggle versus lefties. He's better versus righties. A uh, guy who, who can steal some bases as well. Uh, definitely the guy I'm going to be going with as my low-priced home run call. Just because there aren't a lot of other low-priced guys on this slate. Uh, but like I said, Belt a decent play as well just because Clark gives us so much power to lefties. So VR will be my low-priced home run call. Mike Trout will be my high-priced. And with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching the Lost Day of S video. Be sure to comment and subscribe. Uh, you'll have a chance to win and that free season pass. Addy will be announcing that on Monday. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you guys back here next time. Peace.